Hello teachers, staff, and students of Burbuff College School. My name is Father John O'Brien. I'm a Jesuit uh, and the Vocations Director for the Jesuits of Canada. And I'm Brother Dennis Clavez. I'm a presentation brother. Uh, we're few and far between at the moment, but I'm also living here in Toronto at the moment and working with formation and vocations. Why do you have a Jesuit and a presentation brother together in the same video? For one good reason. Both of our religious orders have been involved with Brebeuf College School. Uh, Brebeuf was founded by the Jesuits uh, back in uh, 1963, and for the first 21 years it was a Jesuit school, run by Jesuit fathers and, and, and some brothers. And uh, so we're going to look a little bit about roots, the roots of uh, Brebeuf School in, in both of our orders. What are some of the inspirations that have come through that make Brebeuf what Brebeuf is today? So first of all, what, what's a Jesuit school? Well, there's a lot of Jesuit schools throughout the world. We're, we're an order that runs a lot of schools from elementary through high schools to colleges and universities. Uh, there is actually 3,730 Jesuit schools in the world, serving about 2.5 million students. Uh, that's an awful lot of schools and an awful lot of students. In North America, between Canada and the US, there's 86 high schools. So of that big number, 86 of them are here in North America. Again, quite a few schools, but only three in Canada. We operate three high schools today in Canada. Brebeuf used to be a Jesuit high school. It would have been a fourth. Uh, we're very privileged today, though, to still have a connection with the, the high school. Um, we come in for masses and retreats, and we get to meet all of you from time to time, and that's a tremendous blessing for us all. So what is a Jesuit, what makes a Jesuit school a Jesuit school other than if it used to belong to the Jesuits order, uh, which is, by the way, an order of priests and brothers. Um, we're about 16,000 throughout the world in 112 countries. But here are some of the key characteristics that I offer to you for your reflection today. The first is this idea of magis, the magis. It's a Latin word that literally means more, but really what it is is a challenge that we like to give our students, no matter what age they are, to strive for excellence, right? To reach for that little bit more uh, in life, to not settle for mediocrity, okay? Another principle or characteristic is to form our students to be men for others. Sometimes we say for others and with others. We want our students to turn into men who share gifts, uh, pursue justice, and have a great concern, for, especially for the poor in, in our society, people who are vulnerable and, and in need of assistance. That's what we mean by men for others. A third characteristic is the Latin phrase cura personalis, cura personalis. And it literally means in our schools, we aim to care for the individual person. So we respect our students, uh, not just as a student, not just as a number, but as a child of God, nothing less than a child of God and part of God's creation. And therefore it's a tremendous responsibility to try and care for the student in a very well-rounded way. A fourth principle is called the unity of the heart, the mind, and the soul. This is an approach to school, to education, that says, hey, we're here to develop the whole person. There's different dimensions to being a person. We have a heart as well as a mind. You know, we have a body as well as a soul. And we want to form all those areas. A fifth is uh, the phrase, ad maiorum de gloriam. Again, a Latin phrase. We're 500 years old, we, we inherit all these Latin expressions. A-M-D-G, ad maiorum de gloriam, and it means for the greater glory of God. And that's what we want our students to dedicate their lives to promote. Lastly, we want to form them to be, our students to be agents of change. You know, every, every year, every era of society has issues that, um, that need addressing. And so we want our students to go out into the world and be positive agents of change. So that, in a nutshell, is a Jesuit approach to education. Well, now we understand why the Jesuits founded Brebeuf and the brothers took over, because we are the smaller group by far. So I, I just say our charism actually goes back to our founder. And to this day, a lot of what Blessed Edmund Rice did in his time continues to influence us in our communities and in our work in the schools. Mm -hmm. you know, Blessed Rice was found, founded us uh, after a very interesting early life. He, his uncle took him under his wing and he became a very staunch businessman. He was married, he had a child, uh, the child was handicapped, 
His wife died very early on in the marriage and uh, he really looked at what he would do with the rest of his life. And there's a story in his biography that says it emphatically that one day he was standing at the window looking out at the hooligans who were playing on his property outside of his house. And uh, he, the penal laws were in force, so no Catholics could be educated. And he really felt this was the call he had. However, the other part of his heart was pulling him towards an Augustinian uh, monastery in France where he would devote his life to prayer and fasting. But when he looked, and uh, there was a lady again, because we Presentation Brothers seem, when we are making decisions in life, are influenced tremendously by women. And this lady said to him, I hear you want to go to France to pray and to give your life to the Lord. Great. Who's going to take care of those young men outside? Who exactly is going to do it? And it is from that moment that Edmund changed his focus and went after the fact that he was going to take responsibility for education. Now, education for him was the three R's because he started with his reading, writing, arithmetic. That was clear. But it was a holistic approach. I mean, we read in his biography where, you know, uh, he, he opened a tailor shop almost immediately because these were hooligans. So they, had, they were ragamuffins. So they needed to be clothed properly. Then attached to it was a place where shoes were made. And that was done. He had to feed them. So he opened a bakery shop. So he took into consideration the entire child and made sure that from the poverty came, because the real turning point, I believe, is the fact that with education, you can conquer all. It's the key. It's the route for progress. And so when we were opening our schools, we always went to areas and we were invited to areas that really needed the help. When I look at Africa or the West Indies or the mission places, it was places that bishops saw that maybe the brothers would have an influence. Um, our philosophies are very much the same when it comes to that, you know. But uh, as one famous past teacher of Brebeuf, and I looked up in the annals, in your annals, to say, you know, um, he was a, a long time maths teacher, Michael Dao, class of 67. His quote when we were doing our centennial celebration if the Jesuits taught us to think with our minds, the brothers taught us to love with our hearts. So what more, what greater marriage could you have when you're dealing with philosophies of the foundation of Brebeuf College? That's beautiful. I love that. I love that. I love the, uh, the sort of uh, complementarity of the two. Uh, and what you just said there about uh, the Jesuits forming the mind and the brothers forming the heart, and obviously it's both and at the same time. Of course it is. Reminds me of something that St. Ignatius said about prayer. He said, we also want to form men of prayer. He said, when you're praying, when you're reading scripture, look for moments in your prayer that he, he called felt knowledge. And I love that phrase, felt knowledge, because it's something you feel in your heart, but it's also knowledge in your mind. So I think for both of our orders that were behind the school, there was the idea of mind and heart are always together. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, one of the areas, and I, when I was on the missions all my life, so I never worked at Brebeuf, but every time I came back to Canada, I was ordered. And those of you who remember Brother Lawrence, he didn't ask me, he told me, come to Brebeuf, because they're helping, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to keep the schools in Africa going. And th the networking among our schools is so commendable. I mean, even there are some people that I'm talking to today who have been to Africa because we had an exchange program where teachers brought students to go for a couple of weeks to see. And they became our great ambassadors, you know. But Brother Rice, whenever he went to a house, he did not greet the brothers until he greeted the Lord. So he was noted for pushing by the brothers and heading straight for the chapel. And I know in Brebeuf College, you have a chapel. The Lord is physically present. I have been in a number of schools in Toronto, and there are very few schools that have that presence 
the real presence of Jesus Christ in their midst. I would strongly recommend that we follow his example, that you know, when we're passing, to just think that the Lord is here, and he's the one who's carrying us. He's the raison d'etre. He's the why we do what we do. Amen. <laughs> I can't improve upon that. That's so true. There's so many characteristics to Brebeuf College School that I, I think make the school special. And uh, having your own chapel right in the heart of the school, of the school where the Lord res literally resides is, is primary among them. So Great. Well, we just wanted to introduce ourselves and talk a little bit about the historical roots of the school. And as we wish that Brebeuf College Schools has another, um, another 25, 35, 45, 50 years at least uh, of uh, successfully forming uh, students uh, for the good of the world and for the church. And you know, many people have said to me, isn't it a shame that the Jesuits are no longer there, that the Presentation Brothers are no longer there? On the contrary, au contraire, we are delighted that we have lay people like you to be able to carry on the great work. And may I quote a brother, uh, Bernard Murphy, who came from Montreal to Rebuff College. And he says, and I quote, again, I have to put my glasses on because I don't want to misquote. It was at Brebeuf that I was awestruck by the total dedication and commitment of the lay staff. Some teachers were so dedicated that they used to stay after school for many hours to prepare work, do corrections, and prepare tests. These lay people helped me immediately to be a better teacher. And as we find ourselves in most difficult circumstances and we are learning again how to communicate with one another and how to communicate with the students that are at our disposal, you know, we know that unity, the oneness of the staff uh, with the administration and the students is the key to success. So it's there. You have the talents. You have the gifts. Amen. Thanks for hearing us today. God bless. <laughs>